I'm Andy and I'm a soil biologist and today at Jester King we are building a certain kind of compost system called the Johnson Sioux compost and these composts are cylinders that are going to be filled with mostly fungal foods and the reason for that is we want to grow a lot of fungi and then that will be a powerful inoculant to restore our soils which are generally very bacteria dominated and are lacking fun fungal biomass. We're making a what's called a bioreactor, which is a fancy name for a compost cylinder. And what that includes is a pallet, PVC pipes that are perforated, basic hardware cloth, and landscaping cloth over top the wood to protect it. It's a pallet to help get the cylinder off of the ground. And the reason for that is it's going to allow for airflow to come uh, from the bottom of the pile and as well as around and from the top. So the pallet is uh, prepared by creating uh, cuts in the bottom where we're going to place the these PVC pipes that are perforated and that is going to serve as our foundation um, for airflow <laughs> to, to maintain air chimneys. So because this is going to be a very fungally active compost, we actually want to protect the wood pallet from being composted itself and, you know, falling out uh, from the bottom of the cylinder. So that's why we're putting uh, some landscaping cloth over top the wood to protect it. And then the cylinder is actually made out of just basic hardware cloth and we're going to put that on top of the pallet. We are measuring out our hardware cloth. This is what's going to become the structure of the cylinder that we're going to fill with our materials. So we want enough space to overlap to provide a little bit of rigidity to our structure. So we're measuring about six extra inches from what we actually need for the perimeter. And I'm, I'm just using some wire cutters with a um, pretty small gauge hardwire. You don't need anything too heavy duty uh, to, to do this. Okay. So this is the foundation of our Johnson Sioux bioreactor. Just some hardware cloth to make the outer cylinder. So we're using a drainage pipe that's going to allow for airflow to come through the whole pile. So if we didn't have drainage pipes throughout, uh, to create these kind of air chimneys inside the pile, the fungi wouldn't be getting enough oxygen to thrive. So that's the whole reason we're going to set up these pipes initially. And then within 48 hours, we can actually come and take them out. And that hole will remain, that chimney um, will remain because the fungi has already aggregated a lot of the materials that are in the compost. Um, and then long-term, the air will be able to infiltrate through the pile. So now that we have the Johnson Sioux bioreactor built, we're going to start filling it with different feedstocks. And so feedstocks might look like wood chips or leaves, mycelium blocks, cardboard, or any other kind of fungal food, uh, old grass clippings, straw, hay, um, all of these are good sources of fungal foods. And today we're going to be mixing our different feedstocks together and wetting them. So we want them to be nice and moist as they go into the bioreactor. That's going to help the fungi immediately take hold and be active. And we're going to do that with pitchforks and tarps and wheelbarrows and storage totes, buckets. Uh, you don't need anything too fancy to get going on this. What I love about the Johnson Sioux method is that it's really low maintenance. So this workday is the bulk of the labor. And from here on out, it's just going to be kind of a set it and leave it approach. So we'll come back uh, nine to 12 months and check on the compost to see if it's ready to use. I personally would take a sample and look at it under the microscope to make sure we actually have the biological life we, have, we want there. Uh, before using it as an extract, which is the easiest way to make a small amount of solid compost go further, is to extract it into water. I hope you're inspired to build your own Johnson Sioux bioreactor at home, and if you do, please tag us.